A bunch of little house party battles. I have a bunch of stuff. The memorable battle where all this came to a head. To get to that battle first, I was started to be able to record my first mixtape. So it's called um, Audio Crack. How, well, hold up. Um, when, when was this? This is 99? One goes into the other one. Yeah. Okay. So I made a mixtape called Audio Crack in 2000. I started working on it in 2002. And the way I started being able to work on it was my friend Matthew Peltier was going to uh, Vanier. And so he took the music program and ah. got us access to the studio. And we would go in, sneak in on the weekend and just record. But the thing is, so he was learning how to record, but like he might not have been ready for the recording the vocals yet. Like, yes, but no, like we weren't there, you know, like the idea of like punching in or, you know, those things didn't occur to us. So every track on that fucking mixtape is like, all three verses are done in one take, but like not the first take I did just all in one take whenever I would finally get it right. So I'd have to do it like a million times, all three, because I didn't understand how to sequence the, the bars. Like we were really rookies. We just barely knew what we were doing, but we managed to put together a decent sounding fucking mixtape by the end. So we didn't have no money. So we just burnt a bunch of CDs and wrote audio crack with marker on it. And, started pushing them around the hood and sold like 300 burnt CDs for like 10 bucks a pop. So that was the first hustle. So 2000, it came out like 2003. Now two, where that links into the freestyle battling 2003, there's an event. I'm, I'm sure it was 2003, but CL was there. He's still in the chat. Like he probably remembers this um, survival of the illest. It's like a big freestyle battle at Fofon Electric. Okay. And then, I've been, I had been, yes, not to leave parts out of the story. For the last year or two, I had been calling in to K103 and 90.3 because it kept having like freestyle hours. That's and I would the, call in. That's the Don do Smooth one? Yeah, exactly. Right. Don okay. Smooth had Shoot and then, you know, uh, Blaster and then had Ill Groove Garden and stuff like that. So shout out to them, man. Like I would just come in, call in and freestyle. I'd be on a pay phone. I'd be on a fucking cell, my friend's cell phone sitting in the car with everybody around me. Like I'd just be randomly in places. Yo, it's time to call. We got a call. My boy Pat would always fucking tell me, give me the phone. Give me the phone. <laughs> so that shit was bigging up a little bit. My name, I got into who's the illest and there was like 30 rappers at least 30. But this I, now, now I'm I'm in a different league because Laval rappers was not that good. Like it was just, at least in my opinion, and I'm not hating. But there wasn't anybody active except for Malicious. If me and Malicious weren't gonna battle. We were cool. Like it's just, it is what it was. We just to bump into each other in the shopping center, like chilling, like you know, on the side of the wall, have a cigarette. We can still smoke on the wall. But I get to who's the illest and fucking. It swarms of people. It's the biggest crowd I've ever been in, like, hands down. And I'm low-key trying to push this mixtape. And anyway, I get the battle starts. People keep whittling down, kicked out. It's like elimination after one after another. And so I finally get in. I think I, I get in, like, I don't know. It's like 10 rappers left by the time I get in. How does the format keep work? Going. It's on beats. Like one, like basically like a minute, minute and a half, something like that. And so I, I tore through four, five, six, or maybe less, like depending on how the eliminations were working, because I wasn't the only rapper, right? So I don't want to embellish. But anyway, somewhere around then, the important thing is the final four of that battle in chronological order, if I remember correctly, and CL can correct me if I'm wrong, but was Shogun, no. Justice, Shogun, CL, Rico Lux. Okay. Like Justice McFly? And, so like, yeah, Justice. Justice from Northern Lights. He fucking monster. I, it was If it wasn't him, it was Shogun, but I'm pretty sure it was one of the two because Shogun is a fucking DJ legend. Like, Shogun, man, yo, that guy is one of the best rappers that for some reason nobody he, nobody's ever heard of. Like he's a fucking best kept secret in the world. Like, But those who know, know. There's not a rapper, I'd say, so for me not to brag, let's put it this. There's not a rapper on an elite tier here, a lyricist in Montreal, English, that don't fucking know who Shogun is. Like, 
Like there's a because it from from experience from the past, like he's the dude, like he's that guy, and he makes great fucking music. Uh, I'll be but real yeah, with you, just, I never really, I didn't know who Shogun was, man. Honestly, it's because you know, a lot of this too is like part of why it's really cool to talk to you. As much as your opinions on other stuff is cool, but this part where you're like actually sharing history, who did what, oh, yeah. like I got to now go after this and look up Shogun and find the music and, and check it out. And it might be that the name comes up again and stuff. And I think it's important just to make sure that people know about it. Like Justice McFly is a beast. And yes. that guy fucking Mother flipped fucking that. Beat. He flipped. A good fucking dude. His current life is like so. A good dude. Yo, I, I had the pleasure of working with him in Day Job Land. So I don't know right. him from hip hop. I know his his SEO life. Yeah. And that yeah. guy is living the dream on corporate dollar. And I can't tell you numbers, but I got a ballpark idea of how high that number is. And yo, that guy's living a dream. Plus, because you got to keep in mind, it's not just that number. He gets per diems because he goes and travels all the time and he parties in Amsterdam for business and crap like that. It's nuts. Yeah, let's not talk about a man's money. Let's 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 not. But all respect right, right, sorry. justice. I love that man. But that's that's different conversations. We got to leave the man's money out of conversation. I just meant that it's, it's not good. Different. Not like it's, I'm not saying a number. I'm just saying opportunities that come attached to it. Like a per oh, diem yeah, is no, a benefit. So a per diem thing. is just like when you get paid to go up overseas in addition, because your salary is irrelevant. It's the benefit yeah. that I want to accentuate that this is something that he, and it's not again, not about his money. I know, like, I don't mean to like cross the line. It's about that he gets paid. No, it's not. And, it's, it's old, sorry, old school ethics in me that are like, you know, we don't talk about it. With other so that's why I didn't say a dollar. I said it's a yeah, good range. Give me your example, that's why. So no, no problem. Yeah, no, I mean, that's why a good range is meant to be like you want to aspire for some shit because it's possible in other avenues. That's why I don't want to say a number. And a per diem is specifically yeah. when you're on vacation with not vacation. You go on a work trip. Yeah, I had it with Pakistan. Money. They give you extra amount per day. So that's included into his life plus free trips. Like that's more what I'm trying to convey. Like this is actually a life. That, I mean, maybe the partying part I'm accentuating. He's actually kind of really calmed the fuck down. He's he's really dad mode and he's a fucking great dad. And he might get mad if I said partying, whatever. Fine. Sorry, Marty. Um, but really, it's more like dad of the year. That guy's a fucking role model. I look up to him a lot. I really think he's a super cool dude. So I, I, I don't that's really. A worthy, that's a worthy dude to look up to because he really like. He's a dude that that shows a lot of love. He, he's genuine. If you didn't mm -hmm. like, if you don't like you, we don't like you. you I like real people. They don't Fair sugarcoat enough. shit, but they're fucking good fucking people. And like Justice, always been super cool to me. So I respect the fuck out of him. And he's a monster. Like yo, yo any Myers. fucking record, Myers. Awesome. Okay. I, yeah. I, I, he's like yeah. he did his one track. When and I first heard of Northern Lights, my boy's girlfriend had put me on because she kind of knew them from back in the day. Yo, I was blown away guys no nah, i saw them live once but i didn't know who he was uh, it was at one of that tour it was one of the last shows at under pressure that i blast and everybody 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 was at it was like a huge event and then after that there was never anything again of that nature in with those people like magnum and uh, everybody was there uh i know srh was there because i was hsr at the time and i was paying attention to that name and like everybody sure was, was there, there. There's a very good chance I was there. That that list of names, yeah, because I did a couple under pressures. So like, yeah, it's very possible. To be there. Oh, it was a memorial event. It was the memorial a year after I think, unfortunately, Dutch had passed. It was something like that, and yeah. it was really, really. And yeah, I, so I went to that event. Yeah. I was curious. Oh yeah, I was. And so yeah, I might have yeah, even yeah. seen you perform back then. <laughs> That's entirely possible. Likely, yeah, man. Yeah. yeah.